what's up there, YouTube? Section 333 here. How's everybody today, all right? So, uh, just checking in, saying hello. Smoking the, uh... It's the Cornell and Deal. Uh, Missouri Meerschaum uh, poker. And... I believe it's called the Southern Gentleman. It's based off the Country Gentleman, but it's poker. Uh, and it's, uh, I believe it's the Country Gentleman Bull. Uh, so, great pipe. And, yeah, I've always liked Missouri Meerschaum pipes. I've done a couple videos on them. I do keep uh, corn cob pipes available. A bag of seconds. As I said, you know, invariably, I, uh, you know, particularly in the summertime, you know, if I'm entertaining or something, uh, what can happen is everybody smokes cigars these days, I guess. Uh, well, not everybody, but there's quite a few people who smoke cigars. So what they will do is they will, towards the end of the night, you'll see a lot of guys, you know, the bourbon will break out, stuff like that, you know. Uh, maybe maybe we'll break out some scotch and a petitif or a nightcap or something like that. Uh, and then the cigars might venture out. You know, a couple of guys will bring cigars and even the ladies sometimes smoke them. And uh, I used to smoke cigars and have gravitated towards the pipes. And so I might break out some pipe tobacco and You know, a little Latakia flake, or uh, sometimes I'm, you know, you, if it's a special occasion, I might break out the uh, Frogmorton cellar even. And invariably, one or two people will say to me, Oh, you smoke a pipe. Or they might say, Oh, what is that? It smells good. And I find the flavor of pipe tobacco to be more appealing. It's not as harsh as cigars to me. The nicotine to me is not as severe. Also, I tend to smoke less when I smoke a pipe. Um, depending on the bowl, you can do it for a shorter period of time or as long a period of time and picking up a pipe after it's been set down for a while is to me uh, I seem to and relight that pipe it still tastes like that pipe it doesn't seem there's something about a cigar that's been sitting a while and you go to relight it and it's just not as uh, appealing as it was when you first lit it I find the pipe doesn't necessarily overpower every other flavor in my mouth, too. So I like that. So that being said, people will ask, oh, and I, and I might say to them, you know, oh, it's such and such tobacco. It's uh, Penzance. It's uh, Quiet Nights. It's uh, people love Quiet Nights for some reason. Uh, it's, you know, it was <laughs> what people seem to like, too. Meat pie by uh, Drew Estates. That was very, very popular when I started smoking that. Um, they'll, they'll ask what that blend is. And especially Drew Estates, because, you know, a lot of people smoke the Drew Estates cigars. And I might say, oh, it's funny you should mention it. It's made by the people who make the acid cigars or the people who make the Cuba Cubas. You know, it's Drew Estates. And they might say to me, oh, you know, that's pretty cool. I'd say, you want to try it? I have an extra pipe. And I break out one of the corn cob seconds. You know, this is not a second. Um, but the smokable seconds. And I tell them, yeah, you take the pipe home. It is a little tobacco. I might give them some uh, sample blends or some of some things I have around, you know. Uh, some of the stuff I, I might have in bulk. Um, and 
and uh, and today this is the CAO cherry bomb which is uh, it's taken me several years to smoke the 110 I have um, not that I dislike it there's just things I like more OMS mug Valhalla coffee Um, but, you know, I really enjoy this particular tobacco, um, but like I said, there's things I enjoy more, so I'll, I smoke those more frequently. Um... But sometimes you just get the taste where you just want to try an aromatic or something like that. And so you do. Um, ooh, what are you all worked up for? Yeah, every now and then she gets a little worked up. And, you know, it's funny because this time of year, a lot of my neighbors are taking walks in the community now, walking their dogs, things like that. Um, you know, so uh, I didn't realize there were so many children in our neighborhood. We don't see many school buses, uh, but there's a lot of kids in the neighborhood, um, families with children, which is great, you know, is, um, you know, when you're, when my kids lived here, I think we were one of uh, like maybe four or five families on our block who had children um, that, that were school age. And then they, the kids got older, people moved out, they, everybody's a grown up now, you know, but it, it's good to see kids in the community doing things in the community and you know, using the community. You know, we have very nice parks and things like that out here where we pay a lot of tax dollars for. And I'm glad that there's kids in the community that can take advantage of those services. Um, I mean, not that adults could not. Of course adults could. Uh, it's just that we work a lot. You know? So, yeah, this is... Um, but, yeah, so she's been on very high alert whenever I bring her out here now because there's other dogs and uh, even though she is all of 15 and a half pounds she doesn't realize that although somebody once uh, proposed to me that the reason smaller dogs can tend to be more aggressive is they're fearful so they just get aggressive because even smaller animals can push off larger aggressors. Um, let me know what you're thinking is on that, if somebody has more experience than I do. I mean, I have experience with dogs, but she's my first smaller dog. Um, Yeah, I was just in the mood for an aromatic today. And pipe was there and everything. But, uh, you know, I, the other thing, too, is, is Missouri Meerschaum has certainly stepped up its game. I mean, you know, you can still get the... And, mind you, the corn cob pipe is always, you know, particularly when it's made by a good company like Missouri Meerschaum. I think there's a few other companies. I'm not familiar with their names. But Missouri Meerschaum is like the standard for a good corn cob pipe. And they have always made a good corn cob pipe. Uh, then there was this community of corn cob pipe smokers, uh, of which I believe um, Aristocob is a member of. Um, and... 
one of the things I really enjoyed about his channel, and still enjoy about his channel, because um, I'm not seeing all of his videos, so I'm watching them as we go, right? But, um, well, I love the Markwood Men's Breakfast Club. I think that's awesome. Uh, but uh, the other thing, too, is there's this community that customizes their corn cob pipes and they do the beautiful work on some of these pipes very creative stems um you know they just go high end with the whole deal uh and uh, it's just really cool to see but missouri meerschaum has picked up on that and they said well what if you know all right what if you don't have the ability or the skill or the wherewithal to customize a corn cob pipe you know or even where to begin let's make a nice custom corn cob pipe for this person and they have and i am thankful for that and i, and I truly appreciate it uh it, it's obviously they charge more for these um but they're also not charging an arm and a leg for them. And it's not going to cost you as much as a Punto Oro. Um, Savinelli. It's not going to cost you the price of a Sherlock Holmes Peterson or a Paul Winslow hand carved. You know, it's just not going to. One thing, though, I've noticed about cherry tobaccos is, like, even in a corn cob pipe, this will smell like a cherry tobacco forever now. But because it's a corn cob pipe, it's not as big a deal to me. It won't always taste like a cherry tobacco, but. When you smell that bowl, you sniff that bowl, it is going to smell like a cherry tobacco, I, I think, forever. You know, it's funny, too. Um, people get the experience. Everybody loves the smell of these, for some reason. Everybody loves the smell of a cherry tobacco. And if I give somebody the opportunity to smoke, let's say... Frogmorton Cellar versus CAO Cherry Bomb, 90% uh, of the people are going to say to me, ah, you know what, give me the cherry. Okay. And then they're like, eh, it's all right. Now, I'm not going to lie. My first foray, and please chime in, what was your first tobacco to smoke? Mine was... Uh, Mine was Captain Black, uh, the white. Um, oddly enough, I actually have a pouch of that that is still moist to this day, and it's at least five or six years old. And I've never... The candidate, and it's not in a jar or anything. It's just sitting there in the pouch. It's still moist to this day. It was so wet. Um, I didn't know about tongue bite, things like that then. I think I was heading to a party. And I didn't want to smoke a cigar. Or I'd forgotten my cigars. The place I went into did not have cigars. And, you know, like I said, you know, at the end of the party, people might sit around, smoke a pipe, or, or, or smoke a cigar, or, or uh, you know, some people smoke cigarettes. Um, and I was like, yeah, you know, I usually would bring cigars to these types of things. So I grabbed the pipe out of the guy's bin. He didn't have any uh, 
So he had some cheap pipes, not even Dr. Graybones, I don't believe. I think they were actually, they weren't even Mr. Brogs. They were like cheap, no-name bin pipes. So I grabbed the pipe out of the bin. I grabbed a uh, pack of uh, Captain, Captain Black pipe tobacco. And uh, I went and I, I smoked it at that, at that event that night. And I enjoyed the room note. Everybody enjoyed the room note. Um, it was mild. Uh, and it was, you know, it's, I think Captain Black is just Cavendish tobacco uh, for the most part. And it, I didn't mind the flavor of it. I felt like there was kind of a, an anise effect going on there. Some kind of anise. I could be wrong. But, um... It was vanilla with anise. I, that's how I looked at it. But, I definitely got tongue bite that night. And I did not enjoy it. I, I think I didn't touch a pipe again for some time and then somebody gave me a cherry blend that I did not like and somebody gave me some half and half that I did not like and then I think I had some Mississippi River is what it was and I had the Mississippi River and said oh well, that's different. And that's when I heard that, oh, not everything has to be cased in the pipe uh, tobacco community. Um, not everything is a flavored tobacco. Some of it's just plain. And uh, I fell in love with Latakia after that. It was the smokiness of it. Just even the tin note of it just did something. And I'm like, wow. I said, you know, this, this is nicer than cigars for me. But, yeah, let me know what your first experience was. If you stuck with it right away. Because, um, like I said, I myself was not into it. Um, because of the cherry blend, I think. And then, or because of the aromatic. And the tongue bite, things like that. Then I learned about drying and things like that. I had a friend who smoked a pipe and he's like, oh, no, no. If you get something wet, you got to let it out for about 30 minutes. Let it dry. Just let it sit out. Spread it out on the table. And a paper plate or something like that. So I started doing that. And then even the aromatics became more tolerable. Uh, for a while, I would not touch aromatics at all. And I just smoked mostly uh, Latakia blends. Another blend I really enjoyed, actually, was uh, and still enjoyed to this day, particularly in the summertime. Vapors really enjoyed vapors. The uh, vapor that was made by Drew Estate actually was one of my favorites for a while. I really enjoyed that, particularly over the summer. I had that hay and straw scent, and you could smoke that easily all day. I felt I felt that was an easy all day smoke. You know, and then, although as much as I enjoy vapors, I still enjoy the Taki the most. Love my Latakias. The other thing, though, too, is uh, some of the vapors, boy, they got a kick. That Elizabethan mixture, ooh, ooh. that's some powerful stuff. And I know there's some guys who that's all they smoke. I think uh, Law and Smoke, Paul Walker, that that's his blend. <laughs> um, Bradley from Stuffing Things, that's his blend, man. And they they make no bones about it. Surprisingly, people have told me Nightcap had all this power and everything, and it does. Nightcap definitely has a kick. Um, but I can I can deal with nightcap. I can smoke nightcap in the middle of the day, not have a problem with it. But that Elizabethan mixture, ooh, ooh, ooh.
It is a beautiful day out today. It's cold. It's brisk right now. It is brisk. But it is beautiful out here today. And I wish everyone could uh, can get outside. I really do. You know, even with all this uh, coronavirus stuff, I think people probably should be getting outside. Um, you, you know, the big UV light in the sky kills uh, germs. Yeah. Plus, when you're in the great outdoors, eh, you're not in a confined area breathing, rebreathing the same air over and over. Um, which is a great way to get infections and bring bacteria into your lungs, is to breathe the same recycled air over and over. That's why people on planes get sick, things like that. Um, This is an excellent aromatic, um, as aromatics go. Very little tongue bite, and very little, uh, and you, you actually, even, I'm a little more than two-thirds of the way through this bowl, you still get the scent of it, but it's definitely turned. Um, it's, it's just more of smoking like a pure Cavendish now. But it's not unpleasant, not unpleasant at all. I do wish Drew Estate would come back out with their uh, blends again. That would be great. I guess, you know, they're not money makers. They really aren't. Um, even if they made those blends for Suge, uh, which is, I guess, their uh, Japanese partner. I mean, Suge is always, you know, they're always going to make pipes. And they've always made pipes. So it would have been nice if they just continued to make the blends for Suge then. Little bird squawking at me here. Oh. Oh. This is a perfect day for a pipe. <laughs> it really is. This is a perfect, and actually, I had gone lunting earlier today, um, which uh, I don't know the origin of the term lunting. Um, someone can chime in in the comments, please. Uh, but it basically means to walk and smoke a pipe. Uh, and... Even early this morning, when it was slightly overcast, it was just absolutely gorgeous still. Uh, it, it was the perfect brisk early morning hike that you needed, you know? And, uh, yeah, I, didn't, like I, said, I didn't hike out through the woods or anything. I just walked around the uh, several blocks in the community, you know, to just try and get a little exercise. As the gym is closed, I think I mentioned in one of my videos I rigged up a TRX so that I can get some resistance training in using my own body weight. It's, it's actually been pretty good exercise. Um, you know, it makes me rethink things. You know, if I ever do get that cabin out in the woods that I desire so much, um, there are things that <laughs> I've always said. Uh, I want to put this on that land. I want to put that on this land, on that land. Yeah, I definitely want a shooting range. Um, I would love some place where I could fish uh, and enough land where I could hunt. But what would I do for resistance training exercise? And, you know, obviously a TRX, a pull up bar, chin up bar. Um, there's only so much wood you're going to chop. Uh, yeah, 
Maybe I would put a small obstacle course on <laughs> to remind me of my formative years. <laughs> All right, guys. Listen, I'm going to head in for the day, and uh, I wish everybody uh, safe and uh, healthy spring as it is, it is here. Uh, more importantly, uh, you know, you know, um, in Hebrew, the, we have an expression, easy fast, um, which you wish somebody an easy fast at the time of uh, Yom Kippur. And, uh, you know, it's not that we're fasting, it's just that I hope everybody gets through this okay. Um, it, it can be mentally draining, this semi-quarantine type thing. And, you know, I, it may get to full quarantines for, you know, for a period of time. I don't know. I don't want to sow the seeds of uh, hysteria, so to speak. But if it does, you know, we're the most resilient country in the world. Yeah? We will come back from this, you know. It's, you know, it's, it's, we are resilient people. You know, we just have to remember that. All right. Section 333 out. God bless.